Hello, hello. Hello. How's it going? Wonderful. It is good to be here. So for those of you that are new to our Court of the Events, welcome. Glad you could be here. Uh, Jesse Shook will be co-hosting virtually with me. Thank you for joining me. Good to be here. He is the pastor of FCF Fort Worth, also known as Ovation Church in Burleson, Texas. And he's on our strategic planning team. And he knows a ton about media. If you ever have questions about cameras or lighting or sound, he's your guy. We got a whole bunch of guys on today. This must be a male driven topic. Interesting. Jeff, it's good to see you. Peter's a, on Kenya. Yes. Okay, so I want to tell you about our first year with our quarterly events. Um, boy, I don't even remember when we decided to do these quarterly events. Yeah, just in case you didn't know, in the room with me, I have Ryan Weaver and I have Haley and uh, we are just here. This is us. Miss Cookie is at home taking her healing. She is sorry she missed it. But our first year of doing quarterly events, um, we wanted ways to connect with the members more. And this was just one of the ways that we figured out that we could connect with everybody. So we wanted to base it off of being a healthy leader, having a healthy family, leading a healthy ministry. And so all of the topics are going to be based around that. So I want to give you some things, uh, kind of like a 2021 in review for quarterly events, if you will. So for our lives, each one doubled every single time. So quarter one was pretty low, then quarter two grew more, quarter three grew more, and then quarter four was our biggest with the exception of today. Today is even bigger than last time. So we had over a hundred people join us live for our events. Um, and then this is my favorite part. On YouTube, the quarterly events have been viewed, Ryan, I don't know if you knew this, 1,515 times. Come on. Very so this cool. just like exceeded our expectations of what we wanted to do. And I'm believing that, I know I've heard some uh, praise reports of success stories from knowledge that you've gained, uh, whether from media, with cameras, with Jesse, financial successes, family successes, or even just being encouraged with faith, which if you didn't watch quarter four, I suggest you do because um, it was my favorite. I have to be honest. I loved that one. So anyway, 1,515 views just on our quarterly events alone. We had 10 different countries join us. They went across the globe. And today I have to tell you, we have Jamaica, Kenya, Nepal, Nigeria, Canada, and Botswana all registered. Hello, world. I love it. I just think it's pretty cool. We get to do this. Reach the world in one day. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for being a part of the FCF family. We value you. And this whole thing is to help you become healthy leaders have healthy families and lead healthy ministries. And we believe that no one should do it alone, which is why we are here with you. So um, I wanna give you two dates that you need to remember moving forward. Our quarter two is happening on May 5th. Spend your Cinco de Mayo with us. We're gonna be speaking with Beth Williams and she does a parenting course. Um, if you're on Instagram, her handle is raise them up to, 
And she gives like daily little advice on great parenting tips. Um, she's just kind of revolutionized my mind when it comes to parenting. I have a parenting class set with her actually next month. And I can't wait for that. My husband and I will be doing that. Um, we're going to be talking about intentional parenting. Parenting doesn't just happen. The decisions you make with parenting doesn't just happen. Or even if you're a grandparent, um, everything has intention behind it. And so we need to be more mindful of those intentions. Make sure we are gearing them up to be adults because we're not raising kids, we're raising adults. So keep that in mind. And then also, if you have not registered for our Vanguard event happening in Tulsa, July 19th, 20th, 21st, if you're an FCF member, we are having family dinner on July 19th, only for you, our FCF members. We just want to spend time with you. Uh, we miss everybody so much. So it'll be a wonderful time that we all get to spend together, July 19th, 20th, and 21st in Tulsa. We're going to have a website up very, very shortly, actually, and all of the information will be in one location. Okay. Oh, Ryan just told me the link to register is in the chat. If you have not registered for Vanguard, I suggest you do that. Who else we got on here? Man, we got a full house today. This is great. I love it. Sita. I don't see your face, but I see your name. Tim, good to see you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Jesse, I sent you the videos beforehand. You had time to review them. So he kind of has a yes. little easy in here. I just got done watching them probably about 15, 20 minutes ago and love what uh, our speaker Clint is about to go into and the need for digital ministry, uh, digital evangelism and connecting with people really outside the walls of our church. Um, I am about to go on a mission trip in about 10 days from now. I'm going over to Albania and going to be ministering there, leading a group of about 14 of us from the church over there. Okay. And when we think of missions and reaching people, that's oftentimes where we go in our mind is traveling or doing something like that. But it is just as important to see digital ministry as a mission field and reaching yeah. people who are either outside of your church or outside the family of God. And so I love what Clint talks about doing that. Um, and I am 42 years old um, and I love technology and multimedia stuff and things like that. But what Clint talks about uh, challenges me and takes it even further and in a way that is uh, actionable and so it's not yeah. just theory and it's not just uh, a good ideas but it's actually uh, uh, great ideas that can be implemented regardless of the size of your church regardless of your style uh it's not about hey wear ripped up jeans and try to look cool to reach a younger generation no it is what is the message that god has given you and then how are you going to communicate that to people in a digital right. world yeah. And really, I see that no different than uh, the Bible before it was written on uh, animal skins. It was oral tradition passed down yeah. from generation to generation. But then when technology came around to put it on animal skins, followers of uh, uh, God, Old Testament, I was going to say followers of Jesus, but maybe they predated that. But but people who had a covenant relationship with God used that technology to put it on animal skins and mm -hmm. then on paper and then a printing press. And so taking the gospel of Jesus Christ, using the technology of your day to communicate that message is so important. The world we live in today is a digital world. Yeah. Uh, we can fight it, but it's a losing battle. It's a digital world. And there are people right. that need the gospel. And so de delivering that in the digital world is so important. So good. My relationship with Clint and his wife was a total um, accident, to be honest. Our kids met two years ago when they first moved to Tulsa. And 
developed this relationship and I didn't develop a relationship with parents until um, like a year ago. We were invited to a party, Hugo went, I had to meet the parents because I'm that type of parent. You don't go somewhere unless I know who's gonna be there. And um, our relationship progressed. I had no idea they were in ministry. We put the emphasis more on our kids and our family than we did on the ministry and what we did for our jobs. And I know that kind of goes against what a lot of us do, but that's our, well, what's the word I'm thinking of? Importance. That's who we are. Foundation, thank you. Family is our foundation. So then it just came out like, you have a digital media ministry and we haven't talked about this yet. What? So then here we are now. Um, anyway, we're going to get going on this first video. I interviewed Clint two weeks ago, and we're going to get going on this first video. You'll get to know him and his heart behind ministry and just a little bit of his bio. Um, it's actually really cool, the restoration that God has done in him and his family. So Ryan's going to get this going, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Clint, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so excited for all of our FCF family to get to know you and your heart uh, with ministry and digital evangelism. I love that you use that phrase. It's so cool. So just so everyone can get to know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, well, thank you, Whitney. I'm so excited to be here and to be with all of you, the FCF family. Uh, you know, it's been an exciting journey. My journey is I was raised in the church and so by my parents, but I walked away as a prodigal as a teenager and then ended up just getting radically saved at the altar, coming to the Lord. And so then I answered the call to ministry and I ended up going actually to Rama, spent time Bible college, and then I went off, stepped out in faith traveling the world preaching, man, went into the missions field, missions evangelism, started in Africa, then Europe, then Central South America, and just traveling the world, helping churches, you know, reach people for Christ and grow and thrive. And so that's I how it all that. began. That's so cool. Now, our sons are friends. They're yep, very close. They, they go to school together and they're close, which is how we met. Yep. And I actually knew you guys before I knew you were in ministry. And mm -hmm. <laughs> His wife and I are friends. Anyway, it was this total happenstance of like, you do what? You do what? I need you. So I was so excited when I found out everything about the ministry. I would love to know how you guys started the ministry. Because from what Angela told me, it was kind of like a total trust fall almost of like, God, we trust you. This is what you're calling us to. Let's do it. But I mean, that's a huge leap of faith. It was. So our journey is wild. Like a lot of us, everyone has their own story. And our story was interesting because we went from here being on the missions field to then me getting at a place, always felt a heart also too for business and some of these things and had some passion. And so I trusted a friend from church and business, mm -hmm. made steps getting with him and ended the story is we lost everything. In 2008, oh when it all fall apart, lost it all. Totally wiped out. It was the worst decision of my life to get into business with them. So Long story short, I oh. had to forgive the person did business with. Right. Then I had to forgive myself. Because, you know, if you're a man out there watching, you know, men, we take it hardest on ourselves. How did I get my family in this situation? We were living with family. We were at rock bottom. We lost everything. And when we came out of that season at just, man, here we are just at the lowest point in our life. And I remember just to tell, you know, those that are watching, it was such a low point where the second time that I left ER, where I thought I was having a heart attack and it was actually a panic attack. Oh my gosh. And it was just at that point, I was like, man, how did I get to this place? And it just was such a low point, but God delivered us out of that season mm -hmm. and he healed us. And my wife and I, our marriage survived, came out stronger and all of that. And then we were sharing our story mm -hmm. at churches of what God had done and everything that we had been through. And we started seeing something in church after church. And we realized, wait, they're not speaking the language of culture. They're, they're struggling and missing and begin to realize that all of those years on the missions field where we would go in, Whitney, and we'd be coming into a country and I would work with missionaries or people that were there that were speaking the culture and the language of culture to reach them. 
And I realized the church was not speaking the language. Mm -hmm. And it seems so simple as a missionary, right? But we miss that language is digital, visual, all of that. And I knew at that point that we were called to be digital missionaries and help churches and ministries reach people for Christ online. This is way before the pandemic, before the whole world right. went digital. You right. know, now I thought, boy, only God knows where he set us up and he prepared set you us up. for that moment. Perfectly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that you guys lost everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. Was, yeah. That's it devastating. Was, but he always brings you through, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Thank so you. I love that you talked about how when you're on the missions field, they speak the culture. Like you go mm-hmm. in there, obviously you have a translator. If you don't speak their language... You have a translator with you so that your message can get through to those people, right? Exactly. And digital ministry is the exact same thing. It's we have to have sometimes our heart, the digital ministry part is the translator to get through to the people that need it. Is that what I'm hearing you say? It's so true. It's so interesting because uh, it is simple, as you mentioned. For instance, let's say we go to Western Africa. Mm. You know, this is one of the first places I started. Oh, wait, we have some people from Western Africa. So, So, hey. I love it. (laughs) Come on, man. I love Africa. That's where I started in missions work. And where I started risen was over there in Ivory Coast. and in Yeah, Ghana we have someone there. there right so, now. And if we were there in the Ivory Coast, you would know that, well, we need to speak either French or when you speak the tribal language. And so if I went down the corner and I was preaching in English, people would be like, man, what's wrong with him? I don't get it. I don't speak English. I'm not going to listen. And it seems simple over there in that environment. But what we miss is that the world now is flat. Yeah. And the reason I say this because of these phones, I pull it out. He's of my not a flat earther. Right don't worry. Is <laughs> <laughs> when I say that is you know now on our phones, it's the same media that we all digest. Sure. So we all digest whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You're all digesting. We have a certain expectation for media, and so there's a certain way that we communicate visually digitally, all of this. And what happens is, is that if we're not speaking the language of culture, nobody's listening. Yeah. And so that's where a lot of times we miss, it's so simple, is on the missions field, speaking that language, preaching in French in the Ivory Coast. But here we are the same way. I want to speak digitally to the audience who I want to communicate with. And each segment of society has a certain way in which they communicate online and which they communicate digitally. And if we don't understand that, that's where the first thing we come in with a church, with a ministry. And we're like, well, you tell us you want to reach this segment of people. But the problem is you're not communicating to them. Right. You're communicating to these people. Right. It's like you're not going to reach those people as much as hard, hard you try to work online, you're not going to reach them until you get this right. Not till you understand how to preach in French. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so we simple. spent so much time mm-hmm. when Miss Cookie took over as CEO, mm-hmm. developing and discovering and asking those tough questions of who are we called to reach and yes. what does that need to look like? And a lot of times we, as, as ministry leaders, maybe you bypass that whole, whole point of, and I know FCF members, you've heard me say this yep. before, but you're not called to reach everyone. So, and I know that's hard to yes. hear because of the Great Commission, but you yourself are called to a unique people, unique right. places, and you need to discover who that is so you can make the biggest impact. Because if you're called to reach everyone, you would be uh, going live all day long, speaking all the different languages, and also having someone uh, do sign language for you. And, you know, because exactly if you were truly called to reach everyone, you need to speak all of the languages, but we're not. So each ministry is called to do something different, different language, different culture. Not everything has to look the same. And through digital media, we can customize that to look differently while all being on a flat earth. Exactly. And that what's interesting is I love what you just said there, Whitney, because This is an area where a lot of people miss it. We're guilty of doing this in the church world. And I'll give you a great example, (laughs) is that we're oftentimes following everyone else, the big church, the big ministry, what they're doing. And you can learn and glean some good things from what the larger ministries are doing. Others, we can take that. We see it's working. We can take that. But some of it may not fit to your ministry and who you're reaching. Yes. And you're not being yourself. It's not authentic. It's not real. So you're trying to force something that's not you. And it really is a counterfeit without you realizing it. And sometimes we're creating and doing things. Yes. It's not right. And that's why I love what you said, how you're called to this certain segment. And each and every one of you listening today, you do. You have, if you really broke 
broke it down, you know that there's a vein specific in the word where God has really brought this revelation out to you. And so good. this is the area where you want to minister and the people you want to reach. Yes. And we have to really stick to our call and how God has us see the lens of how he sees right. things. A great example is I'm, I'm walking with a good friend of mine. And he actually is a Rhema grad as well. And we're in London and we're walking out talking. And I have a lens for evangelism and reaching people. So I see everything with an outreach lens. We're walking down in this area where a lot of people were congregating and they're coming. And I'm thinking, man, why isn't the church down here reaching these? Look at all these young kids that are out. Look at this opportunity. The harvest is ripe. And he's a teacher by nature. Uh -huh. So he's about teaching the word. He sees everything through the lens of teaching in these areas. And he says, yeah, that's great. That's that's great. Man, you know, the body of Christ here in the UK, they really need to know this truth. Well, without him realizing it, he was seeing things through his lens and our conversations wow. bouncing back and forth yes. through his calling and my calling. And there's a blend of the two in the body of Christ with all of us. Come when on. he leans in on his calling, even online, digitally, he's going to flourish and grow and reach the people he's called to reach. And the same way as I lean and be in who I've called to be, you're going to reach more people. And we can speak more into that as you understand it, but it's so yeah. powerful when we be who God's called us to be. And we don't try and imitate no. or be something that we're not just because we see that this ministry is doing it and it's working. Yeah. Oh, okay. One thing that we haven't talked about, and I'm so interested mm -hmm. by this because it was a conversation I had with Angela, his wife, yep. but, um, you guys came from a small church in yep. South Oklahoma we did. when this whole thing started, mm -hmm. when we your did. business started. Can you touch on that just for a brief moment of what you were yes. doing in that small church? Because this was after 2008, obviously. Yes. Yeah. What happened there? You were in a small church in Southern Oklahoma. Yeah, we were rebuilding our lives, literally rebuilding our lives. And um, it was so neat because here we are, just our story and coming back. So we're rebuilding our lives. So it was just serving and did a few things. One is because they were struggling speaking the language of culture, as we're just talking about other churches we went out to. But there, I just volunteered and said, let me help with media, everything you're doing. And we began to watch the difference with outreach. We started uh, creating, you know, social media, you know, ads and, you know, updating their social media, updating everything, all of the design in the church, the website, uh, advertising the local theater where you would come and see a video commercial and now, see Now, this was before your company was launched, right? Oh, yeah. This was just being... This this was just this you. Is just being faithful, just me being faithful and a little getting out there and just reaching and seeing, you know, a small church that didn't have media that was struggling. So started helping them and outreach. And then we're doing events and doing outreach and reaching out online and visitors were coming out. People were coming in, people were getting saved and seeing the power of it and just the impact and even a small church of updating the media how it was taking them, it was a level up. Everything went up and the people, one of the first things that happened were the people in the church that were younger were like, ah, oh, breath of fresh air, like you're speaking to us. And what happened is a lot of times, small churches don't realize this, and this is why you do the best you can where you're at, but a lot of small churches, if your media is not right, we treat them like we do a relative. For instance, my aunt. My aunt will post something on social media. I love my aunt. My aunt's awesome. I love her. And it's like, I see, but I'm not going to share that to my friends. No way. Uh -uh. <laughs> so I'm going to give her a heart. I'm going to comment, give her some love. But I'm not going to share what she just posted because the design's off. It's way off. And a lot of that, that's how our younger people feel about our church. Wow. And we don't realize they love you. They're with you. But I wouldn't dare share your event on my social. I've said that recently about <laughs> so, something. Oh, what was so, it? Wow. That's yes. big. So it was big because the younger people started to thrive and love. And they're like, oh, yes, you're speaking to us. We're proud of our church. We're proud of what's here. And that's wow. once you get there. So see, it's speaking a language of culture, right? The next generation's proud to share about their church in the community, to share the new website, to share the events you're doing, to share. They love the design. Love. They loved it was the same leadership. Think of that. Wait, 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 wait. Pause, Let's stop for pause. a second. Same leadership. Same leadership. Same teaching, same worship, same all of it. But now we're speaking the language of culture through design. And the young people are proud of it. They want to share. And there's wind behind that. So it was a missing element. So volunteering in the church and seeing all yes. of that success, is that what sparked you to start Promedia Fire? And yeah, it was that and traveling, telling our story at other churches so yeah. there and also others seeing the need. And yes, then it 
it sparked. That's kind of where that need. We just felt, man, we need to be digital missionaries and help the church, help nonprofits. Digital missionaries. I love that so much. Well, as Whitney's getting on, I'll just say that was so good. I love one of the points that I uh, wrote down was the need to speak their language. Um, I remember going to a church conference when I was probably 18, 19 years old. My dad was a pastor, and so he took me to a church conference. And they made that point that if I think they use the example of Japan, and if uh, if I went as an American over to Japan and tried to share the gospel and they didn't receive it because I'm speaking English, whose fault is it? Theirs for not listening or mine for not speaking their language. And while that's easy to see that contrast or uh, uh, illustration in actual languages, it's true also with reaching people digitally is that you and I, regardless of your age, and this isn't just an age thing, it's just the digital world that we live in. You and I consume information differently than we did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, and so the way that people consume information has changed and the church needs to now communicate in that way so that it connects with people. Um, one of the things I worked at Jerrysville Ministries uh, years ago before um, Ovation Church, and we had some consultants come in because there are things that we're looking at doing better. And at that time with Netflix and with YouTube and with all the digital things coming out, broadcast television was changing. And where ministries used to go on TBN, used to go on Daystar, and that was the way that they would broadcast their information, it was changing. And it's not the same as it was then, because the way people get information is different now. And so what was changing is 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you could go on one of those uh, big box television stations and connect with thousands or millions of people. But 10, 15 years ago, that shifted with the digital because now instead of uh, you broadcasting to people on your time scale, uh, on your specific channel in, into their homes, it, that's called push. Where it's broadcasted, it's called push media. And it changed to now it's pull media. And so if somebody wanted something, they now go to Facebook, they now go to YouTube, they now go somewhere and they pull it down and they pull the content they want. So where it used to be push media and you would broadcast it out to everyone because that's they didn't have a choice. You were going to turn on TBN, you were going to turn on Daystar, you're going to turn on it and whatever they wanted you to hear when they wanted you to hear it. That's what you had to listen to. And not just in a, uh, a, a Christian setting, same with ABC or NBC or uh, the BBC or whoever. If you were going to turn on your TV at Tuesday at 7 p.m., you were going to watch whatever they wanted you to watch. And they were going to push that to you. The world's changed. Now we go to Netflix, we go to YouTube, whatever, and now we pull the information that we want. And so understanding that shift and then communicating in a way uh, is so needed, necessary. And so learning to speak their language is so true. I loved what he was talking about. Um your relative. <laughs> like, I thought that was the most like real interaction that he could give. Like you love your relative, but is that really what you want to display? Maybe not. Yeah, I, don't, I love you, but I'm not sharing that. And then what the biggest thing for me in that small little snippet was how he said the digital ministry was the thing that changed. The teaching didn't change. The leadership didn't change. The music didn't change. None of that changed. Only the face that you presented in the digital world changed and it opened up this whole new avenue for him and, and the church. And um, he wasn't a professional when this started. He didn't even have a college degree. He was just a servant and learned. 
what he needed to learn to make a bigger impact for the church and the community. And I just love that because how many of us are actually college, college educated? Jeff, you don't get to vote right now. Okay. I know you, you can speak like three or four languages. Okay. Um, but the majority of us reality don't have a college education or at least a college education in what we're doing for full-time employment or in ministry. I don't have a college education. Haley, do you have a college education? No. Ryan doesn't? No. But you know what we have? Servant's hearts and an attitude to learn more. And that's all we need to get going is just search, searching. We talk about it later in the conversation about uh, YouTube University. That's how we learned how to do so many things. We have wonderful resources that we can just find online. And YouTube is one of those. But I just love that. Having that servant's heart to do the things that your church needed to do is like the most important thing. Loved what you said also, Josie. One of the comments that you made, uh, Whitney, was about how you're not called to reach everyone. And while I don't like saying that, because I think what I have to say, everyone should listen to, but there's That's so much ego, truth Jesse. in that. <laughs> I know. Um, but what's true about that is what then Clint talked about, about being authentic. Yes. And um, when I was working at Jerry Savelle Ministries, I had the opportunity to travel with Dr. Savelle to some of the tours that he went on in different churches he went to. So within the span of five days, six days, we went to, you know, four to six churches, almost one every night. And they'd be yeah, we'd go to Florida and a church would be two hours away from the previous church and we'd hop around different cities. And so I got to see churches in Miami and then churches in Daytona Beach and then churches, you know, in Orlando. And they all did things differently. Yeah. And many of them were really good at what they did in their specific environment, in their mm -hmm. community. And I was a little bit, um, uh, possibly arrogant at that time before going because I thought ministry should be done a certain way. And in, as a young kid, it had a certain style, that element yeah. to it, that, man, that's the right way to do it. But then we'd go to these churches doing it completely different than I would think. And I enjoyed it and they were successful, but it was because they were authentic. And right. so whether it was because they were wearing a suit and a tie and everybody looked like they were professionals and you can, if you attended or were on stage, that's the way you looked, but they did it with excellence and they were just really being who they were. Yep. And then we'd go to another church and they were ripped up jeans and untucked shirts. And I enjoyed that too. And they were just being who they were. They weren't trying to pretend at all, but right. then I'd go to some churches and they were trying to be something they weren't. And honestly, it was usually an older pastor and the kids are telling them how to dress and what should happen. And it's just this really? awkward feel at the moment because they just, it's like, dad, if you wear those skinny jeans and ripped up jeans then you'll be cool and the youth will like you or, you know, whatever was going on. I don't know the conversations behind the scenes, but it just didn't come across as authentic and it just seemed awkward. And so, um, <laughs> It's so important to realize uh, this is who I am. This yeah. is what God's called me to. I'm going to communicate that as clearly and passionately as possible. And I know it's not going to, you know, everybody's not going to be receptive and uh, be attracted to that. But this is what God's called me to. And do we need to then say, okay, am I being effective in this environment or how I'm doing it digitally and things like that? And yeah, there's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of best practices, but... Mm -hmm. This is not a generational thing to say, hey, you'd better get hip and cool or else God can't use you to reach the next generation. No, yeah. in fact, I think that a grandparent that can speak with authority and clarity is oftentimes with our gener the younger generation needs. The younger yes. generation doesn't need an older generation trying to be hip and cool. Uh, the younger generation actually needs some wisdom and some authentic communication and experience to say, this is what God has done in my life. This is how I've seen him move. This is right. how scripture, what it really uh, says and what it means historically and, and be able to bring tradition and truth from uh, an earlier previous generation, but then yeah. communicate it in a way that a younger generation can receive that. And that's so needed and necessary. 
It's so good. Uh, one more aspect of this that I want to bring in is understanding your community, um, where your church is or where your ministry is, the importance of understanding the dynamic of who you're reaching. Like if you are in a retirement area in Florida, the way in which you do church is going to be very different from how you would do church in Burleson, a younger demographic, younger generation. That doesn't mean one is right and one is wrong. It means it's different and understanding who you're reaching and being authentic to you and your community. So anyways, and, and about the generational synergy, I remembered that one. Um, it's important. The Bible talks about it. All of our generations working together for the greater good. One isn't better than the other. We all have to learn from one another. My best, my favorite thing that I've done recently is I handled uh, the lives for my grandmother, Pat Harrison, on her Pat Harrison Ministries. And I got to see a side of her that I don't often get to see, which is preaching. To me, she's my grandma. I see her preach, but I don't get to see it often. I learned so much from that time. And all she did was go live in her bedroom on Facebook. And she did it with so many people, like so many younger people got to experience uh, her love for the Holy Spirit and grow in depth in that. All it was, was her taking a step and saying, hey, I don't know how to do this, Whitney. Can you come help me? Yeah, sure. I'll be over. And we're going to start that back up in March, just FYI. Go watch in, uh, at Harrison Ministries. Uh, before you get into that, the next segment and things with what Clint gets into, which, man, the, yeah. the five Ds of digital ministry that he's about to get into are just so, so good. But um, what you were saying with even uh, Miss Harrison is that my parents, uh, my dad, mom and dad, um, lives were transformed by message of Jesus. They really connected with Kenneth Copeland and um, uh, your, your uh, grandparents and Kenneth Hagen and uh, T.L. Osborne and, you know, that whole generation of yeah. ministers that just transformed so many people's lives. And I can remember my dad going, uh, uh, writing out their order forms and ordering all these little mini books. And there were all these mini books, so, you know, the, the tiny little books and 12 pages or whatever. And I can remember he had got stacks of these on all different topics and everything. And today, that same information with a 10 minute Facebook video going live will end up reaching more people than printing one of those books today. Sure and would. so if I were a minister and said, you know what, we need mini books, we need lots and lots of mini books. I don't know anybody ordering mini books. <laughs> people will search for a blog. Still people will search for a blog. People will go on YouTube, but nobody's, man, you know what would really do me good? A mini book right about now. Yeah, but, Nobody thinks that. But, and so take that same information. And this is what's important is God gave you that message. God yeah. revealed something to your heart, to your spirit about a message, and you need to get that out to people. Don't print it in a mini book. Make a blog post. You'll reach yeah. more people with that message uh, or, or, or put it in a, a, a YouTube video or something like that. That's The message didn't change. What God get, uh, uh, dropped in your heart to share, the revelation didn't change. The truth is still the truth. It's just the way we're communicating it to get it That's into right. as many people's hands as possible. Five D's best tips for realizing your digital ministry. Yes. So one of the things we found with working with churches and ministries around the world is we found that everyone, of course, we're looking at the new attendance really is engagement yeah. and looking at how do we create digital engagement. And we found that there were five levels of digital engagement in that pathway and what we call the five Ds. And in the five Ds, it first starts with design. And so the design is so powerful because one of the things that we don't realize, all of us, is the world really is led by design. Yeah. And I'll give you a great example. Great example is, first we'll go to the physical. I go to the grocery store and I'm looking at products 
And what oftentimes catches us is that product that has a great design. Now, if we're going just according to price, we may be you know, veering off from the design, but if we're just on a design basis, we'll look one time I was looking at creamers and there's that vanilla uh, Khalifa, if you pronounce it right. Yeah. They're one where it's got the nice little design. When it first came out, I'm walking and I look in the store and I'm looking at all my creamers and I'm like, ooh, look at that. I see that. And it's like got the nice design, the design. and it's different. <laughs> different and I'm bottle. like, ooh. And I was like, I am going to try that. And so I reach out and I grab it and it pulled me in because of the design. Now, here's the interesting thing. I had never tasted it. Uh-huh. The design pulled me in, just like what your book by its cover, right? It pulled me in. I hadn't read it, hadn't tasted that creamer, so I grabbed it. Now, this is so vital we understand as a ministry, because if your designs are not right, no one will ever taste you. They'll never Come try on. you. You'll never have the conversation. You'll never have the opportunity to share Christ with them. So think about this. I grabbed the creamer, and then I tasted it for the first time, and I came back because of the taste. But yeah. the design pulled me in. This is how it works online and it works with websites. So it good. works with your social media, all of it. You need to design with who you want to reach in mind. Yes. And I love it how you first started with that, you know, conversation of just saying, hey, being who God's called you to be. And in that area of design is understanding that and designing with who you want to reach as we communicate the language of who we want to reach you know, Paul said, hey, I rejoice that Christ is preached. So we love, as you were mentioning, even the churches here in town, we love there's another church down the way. I don't want to be like them. Let's be our church. Let's be who God's called us to be. And let's rejoice that they're down. They're going to reach someone yeah. that we're not going to reach. So right. we rejoice Christ is preached. That's great. You go be you and be who God's called you to be. And when we understand that and we lean in, Here's a great place where it first starts in understanding design and who you want to reach and blending our story with design. One of the times I had a pastor come to me, and this happens all the time. Hey, will you help us with just coming in, being a client? Will you help us reach more people, grow our church? And so we're looking and I'm asking them in that discovery process of understanding who they are. I'm saying, tell me a little bit about what you're called. Who are you called to reach? What is your heart? What is your vision? And so then he starts talking. I said, so let me pull out a little more. Who is it being reached at your church? Who, when they come visit your church, God changes their life. They come to Christ. Their lives are changed, transformed. And that area and segment of your body is growing. See, now we got them thinking. And he says, well, you know, we're really having success with couples. Oh, you're having success with couples. Couples that are coming in struggling with their marriage and they're just in a difficult place or couples that want to grow and become better in their marriage in that area. Because my wife and I, our marriage was literally on the edge of us on divorce in a horrible place. God saved us, did a work. So we have a great place and just, just ministering to couples. And I said, interesting. So you're telling me, and I said, tell me about the church. You have a lot of young families. Oh, lots of young families. We're growing in here in the young families. Uh -huh. We're just ministering to families, ministering to couples. And I said, why don't I see any of that on your website? Yeah. Oh, why don't I see any of that on your social media? Well, we have family. I don't hear your heart. I don't hear ministry. Why aren't you speaking and calling out families, calling out young couples? Why aren't you calling? Because that's who God, you're telling me God's done a work. It's part of your story, your wife and your story. That's who God, you have just a vein where you're reaching him and impacting. Yeah. But I don't see that online. And the lights went on. He realized, wow, you're right. We don't put any of that online. We oftentimes see that where you'll come in and you don't even realize, you know, who you're called to, or maybe you realize with your, your preaching and your mission, all you're doing, but you don't realize you're not bringing that out online. You're not mm -hmm. bringing that out digitally. Another great way of seeing the area of design is I'll often see where I'll get on and chat with pastors and chat with their staff or the ministry. And I'm like, wow, these are amazing people. Absolutely amazing people. But when I look at the website, I don't see life. Right. When I look at the social media, I don't see life. It's dry. It's not life giving. And but when you meet the people, you're like, well, these are I would love, I would visit this church, man. These are great yeah. people. Mm -hmm. I love these people, man. This community, man. Okay. But I'm gonna judge by based on the actual site and the digital, because it's our front door now. Great example. I like to talk to people. So I'm chatting with a young couple, millennials. He now works, he's a software engineer for uh, Google and he's getting out of school and he's going to go get a job. Man, him and his wife going to a small church. Here they are going and they're looking for, and now as they move into the area they moved into, they were looking for a church. So I said, tell me, Jesse, how did you, find your church. He says, well, like all of us got online, I start searching. Yeah. And I said, what churches did you give the opportunity that you went and visited? 
And he said, this is how it worked. I, I got online. I began to start looking you know, at the sites. And he said, we were actually looking for a small church because they came out of a church of a few hundred. And so they wanted a small church. But he said, something kept stopping me. It was, I'm looking at the website and I couldn't get past the bad design. I couldn't get past the outdated design. And he said, I even told myself in the back of my head, I, I know they're good people. I, I know these are good people. And he, he knew, but he said, I just couldn't get past it. So I said, well, what churches did you visit? Well, I visited the ones that were welcoming to my generation with the design. Wow. With the design That's and they communicated to me. So the key is, is the design was relevant because see, we make a decision in split seconds and we base things off people by the design in split seconds yeah. of number one, are you relevant? Are you current? Are you speaking my language? And the young generation has a certain expectation yes. of media. They do. And so if I come on and I look and the design is not current and it's not relevant, well, the people are great. I'm, I'm automatically going to feel like, well, you know what? They're probably not. I'm not welcome. My generation isn't welcome here. Yeah. That's what he thought. So yeah, actually, they ended up going and visiting the churches that had a more current design messaging, and they ended up going to a larger church, though they were looking for a smaller church, just because no one spoke to them at the front door and the website. Very fascinating. It's a good thing you just said, the front door, the website. We've said this before, but just in case you haven't heard it, your website is the very first thing people see most of the time. It's not your church sign. It's not your building. It's not even your pastor's face. It is the website or your social media. Yep. And the importance of those reflecting your heart is so important. Um, the heart of who you're called to reach, who the yeah. faces are that you're going to see. One of the things that you see now a lot of times on church websites is like plan your first visit. Like sure. yep. how accommodating mm -hmm. is it to young families, to yeah. those with special needs, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, now I'm getting very specific. But um, anyway, just the website being that very first thing yep. that people see and the importance of it and the design reflecting your heart. I was going to mention that earlier and you just yes. did. So it was perfect. Which, which is awesome. You're exactly right. It's so powerful because when you look at that and they come and they're making one of the shifts, they're making a decision about your church, something changed. And this actually, we saw it before the pandemic, which yeah. is fascinating. 20 years ago, somebody would show up, you know, old yellow pages days, right? right. You know, it's like, hey, you would show up at the church and you're checking the church out um, and you know nothing about the church. And so you're sitting in there. Well, those days are gone because what most churches don't understand is now the moment someone sits in a physical service, they've already decided they like you. Wow. I didn't know that. So think about this. We're seeing now they've already watched online services. Wow. Already checked out your website. Already come. Now, unless they're invited by a friend, there is times where you're just invited by a friend. You really don't know about church, but that is the exception. Right. People that are looking for a church or coming to visit or hungry for God or want to come back to God. Now they've checked out the church. They watched the message online. They've checked out oftentimes watching for weeks or months before showing up. So now the moment that they show up and sit down in the pew, in the seat, in the service, they've already determined, I like this church. Am I going to make it my home? Mm-hmm. So the experience is different. You've already sold me on your church online. The front door is, that was the welcoming mat. You said, hey, come on in. And now it's the community. Are you physically welcoming them? Are you taking them to the next experience? Are you giving them a non-downloadable experience now that they're here? Non and see, that's the key. And you know, really when you get into this between physical, digital, and we can speak into some of that later as well, is you also, being yourself, you also wanna lean into your on your strengths digitally and physically, and understand once you understand that, you can grow both digitally and physically. And so good. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I'm reminded of something that God spoke to me a while ago. Um, I, of course, at school, mm -hmm. there are so many pastors that bring their kids yes. to school, uh, same ages as our children. Yep. And I was passing one of them in the halls and I was just thinking, man, I love his preaching so much. And God reminded me of just because you love someone's preaching doesn't mean you'll love their church because we're all called to different churches yes, and right. the experience and the community you get at one church is different from the experience and community you get at a different church. Yes. So you can love someone's preaching and maybe that's your highlight is like, Hey, I'm a great exactly. preacher. I'm going to highlight that. And that's great. If 
that's more evangelism than it is church. So if you're talking about a ministry, highlight no. your preaching, no. highlight your teaching. But if you're talking about that's a church, important. highlight the community that they get from being a member of your church exactly. in the design of the website, the social media, and even emails that go out if you send any emails out. Yes. And it's so true, as you'd mentioned, because you're getting into that design. And let's say getting back to that pastor we were talking about before, you want to reach young families and that's your heart. That's who God's called. You really feel we want to reach young families. Well, you ought to be seeing young families on the social media. You ought to be right. seeing young families on the site. It seems simple, but it's a proven fact that what, when we see who we are, we buy products where we see ourselves in, where we like, and you're like, oh, I could see myself there. I could see myself being one of those families. I could see myself in community. Yes. And as we're talking about experiences, you also have to lean in on the strength of who you are. A lot of churches don't lean in on the strength, if you're going after young families, of the children's department and the different experience. We'll talk about a non-downloadable experience as you were talking about there for a moment, is that you really should lean in with your design, bringing them in, but also in who you are, lean in on your strengths. Great example. My wife and I, as you mentioned, our sons, you know, our great friends, is that we've got a 13-year-old, 11-year-old, and then we have a coming on three, three next month and a one-year-old coming up too. So we've got little ones. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, watching at home is not the same experience as live. No. you got little ones going Running around. around you're like, what? You know, you're like, hi. You know, so the, the mess is up on the big screen on the TV, but you're running around doing stuff, taking care of little ones, kids. Well, what happens when we go in a, a live church service? We check the kids into the kids department. We leave them there. We go into worship and we worship and we focus on God and we okay. listen to the message uninterrupted and we pick up our kids at the end. It was, ah, it was a wonderful experience. Well, not that it was a bad experience at home, but it's not the same. If you want to lean in, lean in on the kids. For us, we'd rather be there live every week. Also, we are before the pandemic. We're the kind of people who show up every week live. Yeah. But the point is, is it's a different experience. Lean in and think about your experiences, but it all starts with design. Now we're talking about the outreach. There's two sides to, to design and the five Ds of digital engagement. One is in the area of, and we'll really spend a little bit of time here today as we speak into design because design starts all of it. I can't tell you how many times we have ministries come to us like, we wanna spend money in digital marketing. Can we hire you guys to do your Facebook, Instagram ads, help us grow, and we've done all that and seen grow churches and ministries grow and flourish. But when we look at the design, we say, we can't do it for you because it would be a waste of your money. Mm. Your website isn't right. Your design isn't right. You're not in a good place. We would literally be taking them, spending money, and you wouldn't see the results because your design is not Ooh. right. And that's that's hard. And let me talk to this to design, to all ages out there, all pastors, if you've been in ministry for a while. We oftentimes have to work this course. Sometimes you need to rebrand and yeah. design. Sometimes you got to, hey, hey, we got to refresh the brand because the brand's not speaking to the younger generation. Once again, culture, right? They see mm -hmm. an old brand. They think, well, you know, man, that's and you loved it back in the 80s, the 90s, you know, early 2000s. Maybe it's time where it's like, well, we need to refresh it. Why do all the major corporations refresh their brands? Mm -hmm. Even if they keep them, it's little changes. They'll freshen up the brand, the commercials, the ad, you know, even if some of our classic brands. Look at over the years, you can Google it and watch some of the brands as they've changed. Right. It's quite fascinating. It really is. Well, why do they do that? To speak to a younger generation, to the next generation. So always will ask the question. This is oftentimes where it hits in the area of outreach, especially to with older pastors, older ministers. I've many times been in the branding conversations and I say, are you willing to go with a design that you don't personally like? to reach the next generation? Oh, snap. That's a hard question. It is. Are and that's the one that you? opens. Yes. And that's the one that normally starts the dialogue where it's like, Ooh. oh, and normally what happens in that process is the older minister will yield and say, even though they're still the head of the ministry, they'll say, you know what? I want to lean on the next generation down of leaders at our church, at our ministry, so on and trust them in this decision. And if they like trust. it, I'll back it. Come on. And that is where the game changer happens. Is it once- Just that one decision, decision. Yes, that decision. Relinquishing control. And giving liberty for young just come rebrand, redesign, and that's where you'll see growth and just reaching the next generation. It's so powerful. So that's part of it, the design reaching next. So it all starts with the design. Yeah. And the design opens the conversation online. Now, you want to think about when you design all across the board. You want to think about your website, but also your social media. 
We've seen sometimes where the brand is not and your church and ministry is not congruent in the sense that sometimes we've seen where the social media is very lively. Mm-hmm. Whoever's keeping up, sometimes it's a younger person, someone else, they're keeping up the social media and it's kind of lively and they're doing a good job. And then we come and it's not life-giving when you hit the website. Or sometimes both are just not working. We look at it like, wow. One thing I want to talk about in the area of design is designing your social media as evangelism to reach people yes. and then also to designing as far as your website to reach them and continue that conversation. We take them off platform. So design is the first place you want to start. And let me give you a few action steps today in this area of design for you to start. The first one really is to look at your brand today. Evaluate, number one, your content. Say, and this is a great way you can do it for your church and your ministry. For evangelism, If you want to reach a certain segment of culture, look at what the secular brands are doing. Mm -hmm. Like, look at their designs, look at how they're speaking the language of culture, and then come back and say, okay, let me evaluate. Now we're talking evangelism, right? So you, wait, pause. You said, look at secular brands. You didn't even say, look at other churches. You said, look at secular brands. Well, you know, exactly. Because I'll tell you this, from an evangelistic standpoint, Uh we used to, years ago, we used to do evangelistic events. And we'd even go on college campuses and other. I would specifically hire unsaved graphic designers, unsaved people to create our media for it. Because I knew that, once again, we want to capture that audience, the unsaved, bring them out so then we can have a conversation about Christ. Love this. So, what's (laughs) the... I love this. So, this is where we're going to play Exactly, right? Is it, you know, bringing them in. And now now today, of course, we have all Christians, believers, our graphic design, creative, they can create anything. But the point is when you look evangelistically, here, social media is your evangelism tool. Yeah. So the conversation of let's get off Facebook and, you know, Instagram, that's the wrong conversation because the Apostle Paul is going to be there till he's stoned and kicked out. So mm-hmm. why are we, if the people are there, we're going to be there. We need to be there until they stone. And people stone with their words today, not physically. So we're going to be there. Let's get stoned. Hey, let's get in there and let's be a light in the darkness. Come on. So the key to these social platforms is it's where the people are. Jesus was hanging out with sinners, but he didn't sin. So he's like sitting down the table with yeah. If the people are there, we should That's be good. a light. And so we need to be on Facebook. We need to be on Instagram. We need to be on Twitter. We need to be out there and be a light wherever the people are. Until they kick us off, we're going to bring Christ out there. Be a light. So those are your evangelism platforms. So you want to design to create conversation and then bring them into your website off platform. And so now we can kind of talk into the next area, the the next D. So evaluate your brand. Really look at, hey, are we reaching the people that we want to reach? And are we speaking the language of who we want to reach in our design, our website? Is it current? And the last thing I'll say that is very tough, and you have to be honest with yourself, is a tough one, is that we've had clients come to us and they're like, oh, we just redid our website like six months ago or something. And they think they're current or we have Sally, you know, doing our social media. So it's on point and they're the young person. So surely they're doing a good job. And it's not the case. Here's the thing about design. It's kind of like, once again, like when you buy milk. Mm -hmm. When you buy milk, you go down and you buy it. You don't know. You come in, you open up, the expiration's gone. Boom. And you realize it's sour. You can smell it. You Mm -hmm. go, oh, we taste it. Mm -hmm. We've seen that happen with design. Somebody thinks something, though you just purchased it, doesn't mean that it's current right Right. now and that the design is working. Wow. And so that's something also I want to speak into with design. Be careful when you evaluate. You don't go to, we're evaluating with us three who work in the office of the church and a couple members that are in the church. You need to speak to some people outside. You That's need right. to look at some outside That's sources, right. brand people you're reaching, and be honest enough to say. You were saying that um, you have to be have guts to realize that your website is expired, even if, and that's one of the things that I actually, this doesn't, what I talk about doesn't have to do with websites, but it has to do with board members. I tell all of our affiliate churches when they're talking to me about who they need to put on their board. Okay. That's great. Are they a member of the church? Fantastic. It'd be great if you could get a business leader from your community that you trust to be on your board, not just 
church members or church yes. leaders, but outside voices that love you enough yes. to tell you the honest truth, even if it hurts. And yes. it has to do with your website, with business decisions, with everything that goes on. Yes. You need those people around you that can help with that situation. Yeah. So the key is, is that you need to evaluate your content. You need to evaluate your social, you need to evaluate your design. And as you said, Whitney, you need to go outside. You need to bring outside sources and look at. So not just looking at your internal, that we're us three people work in the office, our board or our church, our family. We need to go outside. Some people that don't have skin in the game that are going to be yeah. honest with you and right. say, hey, one of the things we used to do, actually a major, I won't mention their name, but a major ministry, we were doing a rebrand for them and it was like a big deal, right? And you know, the it's a, a legacy ministry and we're doing this rebrand for them going out. And so for us to get them, their whole vision was to reach the younger generation. Mm. And we couldn't get them past in the rebrand to see it and also to some of the older leaders. So what happened is, is that we actually went out, hired our team, got these college students around, went out on campuses in the U.S. and we showed them current, what their current brand was, where we're potentially going. What are your initial thoughts of this? When they heard it on camera, lights went on. For the first time, wow. they realized we just asked the young people of America, what do you think of this brand? They gave their honest feedback and the lights went on for the first time to realize, wow, we're outdated, we're yeah. expired. We need to change our brand or we're not gonna reach the next generation. Do you know we did an amazing rebrand for them? We're honored and just, it was a huge game changer for the ministry. Love that. Open it up. But they had to see it for the first time. To. Finally hear mm -hmm. some outside voices and go, wow, we're not in a good place. And th this also just means we need to be honest with Sometimes we'll have that ministry, they'll come to us and they'll be like, hey, we just did our website. You know, we just did, you know, this took care of it and it's outdated. It's like buying milk. You just bought the milk, but you didn't realize that it's expired. It stinks, you open it up, it tastes bad, it's already sour. And we've seen that happen with websites. Right. Just because your taste, you didn't realize you created something better than the last version, but instead of making a jump, another five years with tech and where design is today, you made a jump that now you're still two, three years behind. Right. And it was like, oh man, we you know did what? That. Yeah, so it's it's an honest mistake. It happens, the hardest thing to tell a client. You're like, oh, but we just, you know, we just did this and just redid it. Or being honest to realize sometimes who you have, you know, managing maybe your social media or other things that they're just not doing a great job. They're a volunteer, but need to do something better. Or you need, you know, a solution that will fix that to be able to help them so that they can navigate that. But yes, it first starts with design, just evaluating your content, your design and being honest and getting some outside. Because if you don't realize that your design's wrong, everything else we begin to speak about next isn't going to work. Right. So it all starts with the design, design. start the conversation. For instance, your website, you got seven seconds. Seven. We all make split seconds. That's, that's the most that they'll stay. Wow. But why does the bounce, they call it bounce rate, yeah. bounce. Why does that exist? You Googled something, we've all done it. You Google something, you hit the site and in a second you're like, oh, that's not what I thought. Oh my gosh, Boom, gone. so true. I did that I'm like gone. eight times yesterday. <laughs> oh gosh, it's true. <laughs> exactly, right? It's, wow. And that's the bounce rate is that you thought it was something else. How many times that happens at church with a ministry or with something you were doing some promotions or we have to be careful because once again, let's say that we're very lively and we're pulling in them on on social, but the moment we take them to our website, they bounce. Like, yeah. oh, that's not what I thought that's the ministry exactly was. That's not exactly what it was. Yeah. I didn't think Oh, wait, I thought the ministry was, oh, wait, boom. And then you lose them in the conversation. So the next D in our five Ds of digital engagement, once you get the design right, you design, you want to design with a destination in mind. Destination, where destination. are they going? Where are you going? And the next D is discussion. So the next D is we want to design to start discussions online. We want to design to bring people into the discussion and engaging content. So a great example is, let's think about it where you are, you're sitting there and you're reading through Facebook, you're reading through Instagram, you see something and a post catches you, it stops the scroll on you and it gets you a little fired up. You know, you're like, oh, wait, what is that? Oh, I got a comment on that. Whatever the post is, just whatever reason, it just grabs your emotions, pulls you in and you don't normally make comments, but you're making comments. So I'm making a comment on this one, <laughs> boom, and I'm dropping it. You're getting, the point is that was creating engagement uh -huh. um, and it's something that's real. And when churches, when we can start conversations and ministries that create that engagement of conversation, you're winning because now you're bringing them into the conversation and you're saying, hey, we want you to be a part of the discussion. That's where you're getting the like, man. You're getting the comment. You're 
you're getting the, we're interested in this content. So with that, we need to be mindful oftentimes of what we're doing online. Are we asking questions? Are we engaging? Are we pulling people into a conversation with the questions they're asking today, with what they're looking for okay. and creating that discussion? Are we being mindful with our content, especially on social media where our sermon series, whatever that's on right now, mm. that sermon series, are we creating content to pull them into the sermon series where it's a teaser? Your social media is kind of like a teaser. Hollywood does such a great job at this. They do. Know. So one thing they do, even to the point now where sometimes they give away too much, right? You're like, you gave away some of this in the movie and some of that, you get in, but, but you know they who's wouldn't really do good it if it didn't work. <laughs> Marvel is like really good at it. Oh, yeah. And I dive yes. in and I'm like dissecting, <laughs> did you see this? Did you notice mm. this? Spider-Man yes. just got us come real on, good. And I can't on. wait for Dr. Strange to just, come out. Oh, anyway, can you just, tell we have oh, a 12-year-old Come on, come on exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a son couldn't wait. We were there, exactly. And, you, and it pulls you in, right? And it's like you're even there to the point where they've done it so well, where if someone's never been to a Marvel movie, you're like leaving the theater before and you got to stick around. Uh, no, yeah, everybody right? knows. Stay seated. You got to stay seated. You got to say there's more, right? They're pulling you in. It's very engaging. And this is the same thing with trailers and all of it, is that why can't we be more conscious? Because we can. And just our content to say, hey, you know, God's put this message on my heart. This will minister to people. This is what we're focusing on over the next four weeks, six weeks, whatever it is you're teaching on, whatever it is you're ministering on. And just putting some thought, whether it's yourself or a team, how could we look at this content that God's going to use to touch their life? And how can we bring them in in a conversation and to watch the full series? See, it's being mindful the full process of what can we do to bring them in because one of the shifts that take it that has taken place now over in recent years with digital is that the pulpit when you do this right uh -huh. the pulpit is just that 45 minutes or whatever you're speaking in it you're full it's 45 minutes that you're speaking and now you have the opportunity with digital to amplify the message all week long right so think about it. that's power to amplify the message think about this game changer right in the old days, Jesus, you know, Paul, Peter, they're all out there, and they're preaching with no amplification, right. right? Then one day we have the sound show up, and now we have large auditoriums, and we can amplify it out into an auditorium. That was a game changer. We can bring in 20, 40, 50, 000, 100,000 people, a million people, and amplify it. And for them to hear in an outdoor service, we can amplify it. Well, now digital has taken it where you can amplify it to millions. Come on. It's the next level. It is. It's the next level. Ampli so when we get it right, we can amplify the message throughout the week, pull people in to the conversation and into what God's speaking you to you as the leader for the people. Yes. Oh, Come on. That's good. <laughs> I like to always use the example of when Jesus saw a crowd coming, mm. he went into a boat and out to the water to allow yes. the water to amplify his his voice. Yes. He didn't change what he was saying. He changed oh. the way he was saying it. Yes. He he moved himself so that they could hear him better. And that's the whole point of digital yep. ministry is, is that you move so people can hear you better. So people exactly. can know Jesus more. Yes. Come on. Exactly. That's good stuff. And so that's the exact key. It's so powerful bringing them to Jesus and that we could do it. So discussion Here's the next level as we get in discussion. You want to make sure that you are, it's a two-way discussion. Yeah. So when you bring them in, make sure you have somebody that's responding to the comments, responding when people reach out, that when people do engage, you're coming back to them and you're loving on them. You're speaking to them. You're praying with them. You're ministering to them. That someone's responding on Facebook, on Instagram, on your channels, on Twitter, wherever you're utilizing, that they're responding to those people, that it's a two-way conversation. We're striking them to pull them in. And in discussion, when you get this right, this is where it all begins. You've been designing your content, you're starting discussions, you're pulling people in, but the next D is where the magic happens. Because most ministries, most churches are all focused on the first D, design and discussion. Mm -hmm. Do we get a lot of likes? Do we have a lot of comments? Right. They're all focused on that level of engagement and they're missing on where you truly build the kingdom, where you grow your ministry is in the third D, where it begins. And the third D is in the area of discovery. Mm. And this is powerful. Discovery is, so we start with design, we now start discussion, and then we have discovery. 
Discovery is powerful because this is what drives literally YouTube. YouTube exists for discovery. We yeah. want to discover something. I want to find something. I want to ask a question. How do I fix that at the house? My I wife's do it like, all right. the time. We so call I'm, it YouTube yes, University. Exactly. YouTube University. That's right? how I learned how so, to edit videos. I, thank you, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's on there. You do a search and it's like you go and next thing you know, you find a channel you've never heard before and you watch two or three or four videos and you're like, oh, because you kind of like the person. They're giving you great info. You're learning. You're watching another one. Watch another one. It's discovery, the power of discovery. Well, this also too works. It's so powerful when you see this. This works in the realm of ministry. And I think a great example of this is in the, with Transformation Church, Michael Todd. He was a great example of this. And the reason I'll tell you that he was is because he's a great example of discovery. Yeah. Here he was real small. He's preaching to a few hundred. You have 25 people. He tells his story online that a girl shares this on Twitter. Right. And then this message, right? And people go back and start looking at this series he did on relationships and they're watching it and the ministry begins to grow and he begins to make an impact. But it all started with somebody sharing. But what people miss in that story, they think, oh, someone shared and his ministry took off. Well, no, here's the key. The key is, is that he had content that was ready for them Yo. when that happened. Come on. And so a lot of people miss He this. wasn't behind. I want to talk to somebody out there because right now, a lot of times we're frustrated with, well, you know, I know that God put this in my heart. I want to reach so many people. Is that he was what? Jesus said, faithful and little, ruler over much, is that he realized that you need to preach like there's 10,000 people listening online, yeah. 100,000 people listening online when there's just 10 people clicking on the YouTube. 10 people, because that's what he said. I had 25 views on the YouTube. You know, he's, and he's doing these videos week right. after week, right? Video. But the moment that it was like, whew, all of a sudden the message went out there and God breathed on it. It was like, hey, this is the time. There's people that need to be ministered to with this message. He had a library of content for discovery. Yeah. Think of that. Be faithful and little. Be faithful today as you're out there. Don't get discouraged or whatever level you're at doing online. It's just being faithful today, showing up, putting that content out there, getting it ready. And what you're doing is you're preparing for that discovery process. Because what's going to happen is when God breathes on it, you hit that right message. Man, you get things. You learn how to do it on social media. You learn how to get it right. You've got a library of discovery content that now you can build on that people can go down. And I like to say binge watch. We've all yes. done it on Netflix. Totally. I do it We've on YouTube. It. YouTube. It's like next thing you know, Netflix, great example, binge watching some of YouTube. But my wife and I, you're watching a show. And next thing you know, we watch one episode, another. Next thing you know, we're into it. It's like it's one o'clock. We're going to bed, babe. What are we doing? Time and to it's go like, sleep. yeah, <laughs> we can't do it. It's way too late. But the thing is, is you want to make sure your ministry, you have this discovery content that is available and ready, that you're ready for people in the discovery process. This is our digital so pathway. So when you start discussions, your CTA is now to take them into discovery pathways where you have more. Say I started a conversation on social media, but I have a discovery pathways on my website where we can train and teach on this or teach on this subject That's good. or have this material available. And it's, it's so powerful when you add this to your ministry. What you just said reminded me of... Um, a month ago, we were down in Texas for Terry Savelle Foy's mm. next conference. Awesome. And, you know, I love her. She's, yes. a, we're, she's a huge part of FCF. But um, the one thing she said that when she was starting her ministry, God told her, when I know you're ready, get ready. Mm -hmm. And it was all about her preparing and then exploding. Yes. So she still has all of her very first YouTube videos on there from years ago. And she talks about how her makeup is terrible. The lighting is terrible, but she leaves it up there because it can help somebody. Yes, like exactly when right. he knew she was ready, she was ready and it yes. took off. And we may be waiting for that moment of yes. like, oh, well, uh, no, be ready now. Get stuff together now. Exactly be prepared right. now. And if you're not ready now, you better get there. Exactly. Oh. For it to continue, for the discovery to continue. Exactly. So that you're prepared and that you have that content for them to go. And then that you think. So after discovery. So one of the things I would say in those action steps for the area of discovery and digital engagement is that make sure that you have binge worthy content. Yeah. Make sure that you take the time to be faithful mm -hmm. and put that up and to have it on your website, have it on YouTube, have that available. And then you're going to create digital pathways to bring them into it as they get exposed to your ministry. That's good. They're going to want to dive in and they're going to want to find it. So, like one of the things that the YouTube people say, like, oh, make sure you like and subscribe. Like they're giving <laughs> exactly, them action exactly, steps yep. right after the video yep. of if, if this is like a Sunday morning service, mm -hmm. you could say, 
in a separate thing doesn't necessarily have to yeah. be during the Sunday morning service but you could say hey if you want to hear more make sure you like and subscribe or go to our website if you want to learn more about us or put a little exactly. tag on the end where there's a pathway yes. to something else yes and that's where I love never as you get leave into, it hanging love as you get into pathways because this is where we take them now we're big into digital pathways is it it starts with design, then it starts discussion, then discovery. And this is where we're getting into the pathways. So we want to take them in a next step, as you said, pathway. So we're taking them in discovery content. And in that process, one of the things we want to do is we want to take them off platform. For instance, mm. we're reaching them on Facebook. We're reaching them on Instagram. We're reaching them on YouTube. Wherever you're reaching them, at this point, when you start taking them to a deeper level and the next fourth D of the five Ds of digital engagement is where you're going to take them deep. At some point in this, you want to have deep. them where you're taking them deep and you want to take them further. You have the masses and now we want to take them further. The fourth D, so we have that where we're starting design, discovery, man, was design, discussion, discovery. And the fourth D is discipleship. Mm. So here's the key where we take them in that discovery process. We want to bring them to Christ if they don't know Christ. We also want to give them the opportunity where they can go deeper. And so in that, we want to take them off platform. We want to have we're getting their email address. We're yes. taking them off platform and somewhere we're discipling them to take them into a deeper place in Christ. So whether that's, hey, we're getting them saved, but we're now at simple gospel. Now we're discipling them. We're training them. We're building them. We're teaching them. So one of the powerful things once we get into this, whether you do it digitally or whether you do it physically, Physically. The key with discipleship is Jesus, what did he take? 12 guys. He's got his 12 guys right. around and pouring it into him. Is that discipleship happens through community. Mm. We all know that. Discipleship happens through community. That's where true discipleship happens. Make sure you start your small groups. Make sure that you're pouring and you're starting relationships. So That's you good. discipleship through the community. So now's where I take them deep and I create a community online as well as physically. And we want to disciple them and take them deep and train them. Mm -hmm. And so this is where powerful and you can do it on Zoom online these days. You can do Zoom rooms. You can do small sessions. You can also do it physically. And I know because we have a remote company. We run a remote right. company. So it's so powerful that I see I have team members that I will speak to, that I've spoke to for months and months, never meeting them in person. I meet them for the first time. It's like I know them. It's right. like we see like, hey, it's like we know we've been talking and it's the power of, we've all known it with the pandemic, but it's true. It works. You can digitally build relationships yeah. with people and you can. So I would encourage you, you can do it digitally, but also physically. Anything that's local, physically, people want to come out and they want their community local, uh -huh. but you can also do it digitally as well. Yeah. It's so powerful. Yep. So that's in the area of discipleship. I love that. The next D, let's go Ooh, ahead and go right, into the five Ds because Let's do it. Everything's so deep right now. All right, so let's, let's, let's jump go. in. <laughs> and the last D is where the full cycle, it's full gospel. Uh -huh is deployment. Mm. So now we want to disciple them and then we want to send them out. So I want to train you, disciple you, and then we want to send you out online, yep. physically, locally. Now it's a believer. So we want to engage them where one of the things that in the past the church was uh, bad at per se is that without realizing it is that we would often somebody get saved. Whitney gets saved. Be like, ah, she gets saved. She's on fire. Woo, she's got me. Now she gets filled with the Holy Spirit. She's like, whoa, lit up. And we're like, whoa, 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 Whitney, take a seat. We need to train you. And then one day you can do something for Jesus. So no, <laughs> when it's like, that's not how it worked. We know that the apostle Paul, he gets saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's out preaching a few days later. Yep. He needs some wisdom, right? Right? We're all doing that. He's growing in there, all of us, as we go. And then God give him that revelation. He's growing. Same thing with us. Act, man. Do it, man. Be a doer. So we want to disciple them, but we also want to send them and deploy them. Give them opportunities to bring people to That's Christ. So good. Do it online, digitally. Build digital teams. Also do it locally. And one of the powerful things about online is that physically we can reach people where I remember the days where growing up as a kid knocking on doors and yeah. actually talking to people where now we can knock on their cell phones, you know, thousands of people in the area, but you want to train your team. They're the ones having the conversations. They're the ones sharing your content. That's They're good. the one getting it out. So that That's last good. phase is deployment, training people, getting them strong in the Lord, and then sending them out to do the work of the Lord and to build and reach people and build the kingdom. Now you briefly just said this, you just bypassed oh, okay. the word team. Yes team, team yes, the importance yes. of a team, especially in digital ministry. Pastor a lot of times has a difficult time uh, relinquishing control over certain yes. things, but especially with this thing, take it off of your lap. 
Yes. Um, get a volunteer, get a young person in there if you can't afford to pay someone. No. Get somebody in there who would like to do that, who has your heart, who knows your heart and your passion and uh, where the church is going and things like that so that it's not tied to you all the time. Because it can yes. be a large undertaking. Yes. It can be. And the pastor already has so much on their plate. So it's so important for you to have teams involved that you can trust, that you can train, that you can mentor, teach, train, mentor. It's part of our, it's part of our thing. Anyway. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Relinquishing control is so that you can do everything that God has called you to do, not the other way around. Yes. And that, and that's a big key with it too, is then once again, as you build that team and you release them, it, it's so powerful because then you're being a light in the area. As a team, you're making more of an impact, more of a reach. It's good. Uh, and I think another part of team two is sometimes it's just seeing that we need to prayerfully look if we don't have a full team. Oh, yeah. And God, God can bring volunteers. We've all seen it in ministry where why aren't we prayerfully asking for, hey, God, can you bring us someone for this or to manage this or this area? Well, who's overwhelmed? <laughs> Trust me, that was some of the most beneficial digital media information that you could have gleaned from right then. This is going to be available for replay. Uh, I had DK text me in the middle of that saying, can I rewatch this? Because there's a lot of meat in there. And yes, absolutely. Rewatch this. Um, what he said on so many different things. First of all, I'll just recap the five Ds, which they're really seven. Okay. Um, It's design, discussion, discovery, discipleship, and deployment. And if you think about it in terms of even church membership, isn't that the exact same thing? (laughs) You get them in, you train them, and you send them out. You never want to hoard people. You want to give them gifts and train them to go out and to continue the work. It's never about you holding on to people. It's about teaching them about Jesus. So anyway, Jesse, I know you took notes. I took notes too. um, Yeah, I took some notes. Um, I was going to share my mistakes. He talked about two things and I was like, oh, I'm guilty of that. I've like, I I missed that point. I, I, I really did bad in that area. And so I want to share that with y'all because it's always encouragement when I hear about other people failing. And so um, (laughs) where he talks about evaluate content, um, and this isn't like even a old failure from years ago, like this is recent. Um, Mm -hmm. In our community, we have these digital billboards and other churches are on these billboards and so i'm driving by and i see these other churches and just like any really good pastor i know my church is better than their church and so i should be on that digital billboard also right and so um we designed something to go up on the digital billboard about six weeks ago or so and part of it is is we're doing a yes yes i'm i'm saying this is real deal stuff um and so we're preparing for Easter and we're doing an ad campaign for Easter. Well, before the Easter ones uh, are on the billboards and are on Facebook and things like that, um, we wanted to do something uh, to have some brand recognition before they see us inviting them to Easter. And so we ran some billboards and I love the technology and our worship sanctuary and things. And so pretty much like every other church, honestly, now that I'm looking back, our billboard was a picture of worship with the lights on. We got some fog. So you got the really cool beams of light and the back of people's hands and people are worshiping and the screens look good. And the person up there singing has long hair and like, gosh, I want to go to church there, right? They're cool. And it looked like pretty much every other church's ad up there of their worship environment that has their church name visit us Sunday. And uh, that ran for a couple of weeks. And I really, I saw it and I was like, if I was driving by, it looks like every other church after I Mm -hmm. saw it up there. And the point of it is I wanted to reach people that don't go to church, but yet what I was communicating, my message only connects with church people. Like, I don't know a single person who is far from Jesus that thinks that, man, I really just need to lift my hands during music. 
<laughs> like, like that. I just, really wish no. there was a laser that's, show right now. Yeah, correct. And, and so nobody is like, you know what? My heart really hurts. My family's falling apart. I wonder what their music is like. And so uh, instead of promoting what a church person might think of this church, I thought, okay, what can we do that isn't about that, but is about the person driving by? Yeah. And so we actually had just started running yesterday or today, and I haven't seen them yet, but we changed it. And there are five different uh, ads that it rotates through randomly through this company. And they don't show the church at all. They don't have a scripture and it's got our name and logo and it's visible. It's not hidden, but it actually is a short five words six words that is about them driving and so it is you're gonna make it today that's it that's good <laughs> and, and so it, it is right and so then underneath it it might say like don't quit your circumstances will change yeah. and, and so it's this big it's a headline that is encouragement to anybody you don't have to know the bible you don't have to know anything about church but but it's something that if i'm driving it can speak to me and yep. so um, it, I think one of them was, is you're, you're unique and special. <laughs> so it's just generic. So no church experience, no nothing. And then it's got our church, you know, name logo on it. I love that. And so that's going to play, that's going to play for like, I don't know, five to six weeks or something. And then it will be updated with actually inviting people to Easter. But as he was talking about, evaluate your design is that's what happened you know a week and a half two weeks ago when i saw it up there and i was like that's not what i want and i reevaluated it and we switched it and we changed it because it wasn't going to hit the audience that we actually wanted um and then also it's uh, the secular perspective yes is i Didn't i had to think that? about a non-church person i had to think about somebody that doesn't give a flying rat about church because mm -hmm. that's who i want to reach and so that's kind of, I had to flip my uh, perspective. But the other thing about discussion, uh, a failure that we had is we have, a, we use planning center uh, mm -hmm. online. And so whether it's scheduling volunteers, uh, the order of service, uh, kids check in, we use planning center online. I know lots of churches do. Well, built into that is the ability to text people. And so, um, we incorporate that text through different events that people sign up for. And then sometimes I'll text a uh, mass text to everybody that's on our list. And I did this and somebody tried to respond and they got an error that they couldn't respond. So they couldn't reply to the text. And so they actually sent me a message saying, hey, I don't know what's wrong with this. I tried and this is the message I got back. And it said something about not able to respond or you can't message it. And so when I saw that, I never thought about somebody trying to respond to the text. This is just one way communication. And that's not a discussion though. And so right. my response to this person, cause I know the person is, well, I see what happened. You actually thought I cared about what you have to say. No, this is a church. You're only supposed to listen to what I have to say. And me. so- This is about uh, me. Right, and so, but, uh, so we have to actually rethink that because the gener the normal mode of communication, you're weird if you call me, I want you to text me and if I, you know, then I'll text you back. And so within the church environment, um, if we're texting people, but we're saying, we don't want to hear back from you, then that's just awkward and having to rethink that to say, okay, even if that means having to sign up to a service to be able to text people and them respond and have discussion it's worth it to reach those people that operate that way because that's the world yeah. we live in today. And so instead of me expecting them to change to my, per, my, my preference, I care about them and want to reach them. So I'm willing to do the hard work, the uncomfortable work of changing based on their preference in a way to communicate to them in a way that meets their needs. And so that's yeah. uh, some mistakes that we've made. I love that. Everybody makes mistakes, first of all. Yours are hilariously horrible. So thank you for those examples. Yes. Flat um, on my face. Yes. That's the way wonderful. we do it. But you know what? I actually wrote this down. Um, I'll get there in a second. But about humble failures, noble failures, knowing 
giving people a chance to try and fail because that's the only way they learn. So you have to give them a chance to fail and you won't learn unless you fail, to be honest. I mean, how many emails have you guys received from me with uh, editing errors, you know, misspellings? That's me, just FYI. <laughs> We now have safeguards in place that that doesn't happen anymore, but it took me failing a number of times, okay, before we got there. So I wanna highlight the very first thing that he talked about. Of course, design was like a huge portion of that. And we're gonna keep this conversation quick because I really just wanna get you guys into the amazing special offer that he's giving the FCF family and friends. Um, back in the day, not too long ago, the internet wasn't even a thing. <laughs> and to find a church, you drove down the street and you looked at signs, or you had a friend that went to a church, or you maybe looked in the uh, yellow pages for a church. Okay, but nobody does that anymore. I don't even have a phone book. It makes me sad. I used to really like phone books. Anyway, I liked the smell of them. That was weird, I just had a core memory come back, the smell of, what are those things? Anyway, it's now all about your website. That is your billboard. If someone wants to visit a new church in your area, they're gonna Google it. And if your church doesn't have a website, you're missing, you're missing somebody. You're not able to reach somebody. If you're, if you're, uh, church or ministry doesn't have social media, you're missing it. And I know this is really hard. A lot of what he said was like <clears throat> right into the heart because up here it makes sense, but my skill is lacking, to be honest. It's difficult enough for me to get these videos out to you. I know just enough to get me by and that is a terrible place to be. But anyway, our team is growing. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, your website is your billboard. Your website is the first thing someone sees about you. Your social media presence is the first thing someone sees about you. And the importance of that is like top tier. The other thing is highlighting your wins, highlighting your, um, the things you're best at. If you're an evangelist, if you're a traveling minister, making sure you have videos available for people to watch on YouTube, on your social media, not just of you in your phone, you know, that's fine too, but quick little two, three minute cl uh, clips that people can watch for an, a real quick encouragement that can give them your heart and how much Jesus loves them, whatever that looks like, whatever your vein of ministry is, you need to have things like that readily available for people to find and a website that connects that. You need to have these things and we'll get into how you can do that in the next clip, I promise. But the other thing, and it's so hard, but we've been focusing on this for a number of years now is trusting your team, allowing people to have responsibility that you don't have your hand on. You aren't responsible for it. You say, oh, hey, Jesse, I need you to handle the sound for Vanguard. I don't know anything about it. Can you make sure that the lighting and sound tech gets us handled? And I can trust Jesse. And he says, yeah, absolutely. And that's literally what we did. And we've checked in since then, and that's it. Because I know he can handle it. You find someone, and even if they aren't necessarily like fully capable, but they have a servant heart and they're eager to learn and grow, give them space and hand them deadlines. Okay, I wanna hear back from you at this date about this subject. And you just do a check-in, but you're not micromanaging, you're just checking in with them. Do you have everything you need? Is there anything I can help you with? Letting go. It's so hard for senior pastors or senior leadership to let go because God gave them the mandate God gave you the mandate. God gave Jesus the mandate, but he also gave him 12. There's people in your life, in your ministry, in your church that are called there to help give them a chance and allow them to fail. And it's hard, but you gotta let them do it. You gotta let them try because that's the only way they grow. That's the only way you grow. 
And these are things that we're learning through Dr. Radke. I'm gonna do a plug really quick. ROI for Goddess having a special for $97 for life. Just FYI, you can have all of that. Uh, one of the things, man, I love Dr. Radke. One of the points that he makes to that that is so, I, I, I think, applicable, uh, a good action step uh, is to coach, teach, train, and mentor Come on. to replicate yourself. And if that person can do it up to 80% of you, pass it off. Just yeah. give it to them. Trust them with it. They're, they're going to do it differently. And, and there can always okay. be some correction and things. But man, if they can do it up to 80%, get that off your plate, give it to them, empower them. I have to tell you, when I first took over um, applications and renewals, Linda was training me. And she let me fail left, right, and center. So did Lonnie. And it was the greatest thing that they could have ever done for me because now I can be in this position and I can troubleshoot without having to bother Ernie or Lonnie with some of my little questions that I used to have. But someone had to give me a chance. They had to train me. I would call and say, Linda, I don't know what. And she'd go, okay, well, you can look here. Here are the notes, da 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 And let me do it. But you got to give someone a chance. Anyway. It's all about the team. That's the number one thing that he ended with was teamwork. Prayerfully considering a team. Prayerfully considering. I remember he kept saying that. Prayerfully consider. God brings you people. And if you don't have them right now, pray them in. Or maybe you do have them and your heart needs to change towards them. I'm just saying. It may be you. It may not be them. That's hard to say. I've been in therapy this year, just FYI. Okay, anyway. Jesse, do you have anything else you wanna to add to this? Um, this can be overwhelming and where do we start? And yeah. I think that that's where, what Clint has to say in some of the uh, special offer that's available that FCF is uh, able to connect this together to benefit the ministers is amazing. What you're about that, to tell trust us. Trust me, this special is, absolutely amazing and when we run this video we'll come back and talk about it and if you have a question about anything you can put it in the chat dk i see you i love that you're here with us natalie i'm so glad you were able to join us this is awesome you guys i'm so glad we're all learning together okay we're going to watch this last video and uh it's about pro media fire and a special offer they have for FCF, so listen up. Okay, so you're with us to, and you've partnered with us and I love this and I would love for you to talk more about your company, specifically okay. what you guys offer. Okay. And um, at the end of this, he has a very special offer for FCF members. So make sure you watch and hold on because it's mind blowing. I cried when I read it, I was like, this is what we've been waiting for. So anyway, we were ready. <laughs> At the right time. And we're honored. We're honored to partner with FCF. We're honored to help the churches and also to the ministries out there. This is our whole heart. So where it all started, Pro Media Fire, was a heart for evangelism. So each and every one of you, how do we help the church and ministries reach more people for Christ? So what has grown into, what started with just a few of us now, where we have um, you know, a large team, we have about 40 team members wow. and that we have. And it's powerful because we have a creative director, you know, art director. We have our graphic designers, our video team, all of them you know, helping. And where we're able to come in is for you know, churches that don't have a creative team and we can do design for them. We can do their video work for them. We can, we have web development. We do their web development. So we're literally a remote creative and digital team right. for churches and ministries. So that's our main pro media fire, what we do. We also do uh, rebrands. If there's some of you out there, you're like, hey, I, I need a rebrand. You talked about, we need fresh and to update our ministry. That's one of the things we do. We first come in and we'll rebrand and do the brand strategy and the brand identity and work on that point. And then we can do some of these of course, other packages that we have, and it's all set up. It's less than the cost of a staff hire. It's That's amazing. Really how it's set up. When he showed me the price, I was like, you're kidding me <laughs> right now. Because it really is yeah. less than the cost of hiring someone yes. on staff yes. to do it. And I know even that sounds like a huge undertaking, but trust me when I say it's not. 
Yes. Yep. It's amazing. So anyway, continue. Yes. And so that, that really is the benefit and the win. And the other challenge that a lot of ministries have that it's been, I think they have loved is there's a lot of turnover in ministry. That's yes. tough. It's a lot of turnover. So people that come in with us, we can scale, we can scale up, we can scale down. We know your heart, we know your brand and who you are. So it's a great joy. We work with ministries all around the world, helping them grow, reach more people for Christ, doing their creative work, their digital work. And we love it. It's what we do every day. Our team and our team's all believers. So we celebrate, you know, Easter time. Woo! Churches are growing, thriving. We celebrate when we have ministries that do evangelistic events, outreaches. We celebrate when they're growing because our whole mission is helping those that do good do more. Psalms 37.3, trust in the Lord and do good. Acts 10.38, how Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed the devil. He went about doing good. So us, our whole ministry is to accelerate those that are doing good, that are doing the work of the Lord, building the kingdom. So our whole mission is helping those that do good, do more, do more good. Love it. <laughs> so, that's our... so you guys are long launching Creativo. We are. Now we'll get Here's into, we we'll get get into, into the next one. So let me tell you, this is our, our ministry and our team that we're doing on a higher level. During the pandemic, what happened is, is that we, we all know, we lived through it, right? It's crazy. Um, the pandemic, when everything shut down, the first thing we did as a team, because we have all of our professionals, we said, let's just give right now and help the church and ministries share hope. So we launched a campaign called the Great News Campaign. And so we launched this campaign, and every day we were giving graphics and videos, professional, spreading hope, bringing people to Christ, starting conversations, and we made it available to churches and ministries around the world. So so all of a sudden, thousands, they're just sharing it on social, putting it out there, spreading hope. And what happened is, is that they're telling us these small organizations that didn't have their own creative teams, they would have never been able to create this professional content. Mm -hmm. They're like, we love it. We're seeing people get saved. We're starting conversations. It was huge for their ministries. Well, we did it for a few months, and then we realized at the beginning of the pandemic, we said, we have to focus on our main clients. We can't do this any longer, and so we shut it down. It was a, a volunteer program, and the church says, please, do you have something for us, the smaller churches, ministries, something we do? And we realized at that time the need as a team. We said, we need something. Not everyone can bring us on for all of this custom mm -hmm. work and for us to be a full creative team. What could we do? So we began a journey to develop what is now Creativo, and we created, once again, a creative outreach platform that you can reach out and impact people any small ministry small congregation you can do it where if it's just the pastor can do it if it's just the admin the secretary or if you have a mid-sized church and you want to have your youth pastor whoever's doing it it will speed it all up is now creativo is actually available on your iphone your android your desktop all the same experience where it's a website builder. It also too is social media content ready-made that's prepared videos, all that that's dropped every week that's fresh with trends that are working right now. Cause wow. we've got a whole professional team doing this every day for churches. So we know what's working for ministries. So we're dropping that in. Then in addition, we have a social scheduler. So imagine this, you can come in in the app and you can choose, I want this content today. And you can post it in one click and you can take it to your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, and LinkedIn. All of it. And you can post it all once and you can schedule it out. So you can schedule out. And now you can do Amazing. professionally in minutes what would take someone, you know, hours juggling this and that. And all the content is faith-based. Okay. It's for churches, ministries. And then also, too, we've got on top of it, <laughs> if that's not all, so that we have on there. We also, too, have an addition where we're building out and a event builder, which mm -hmm. is campaign right now that's coming in the works. It's being released shortly, which will have you come in. You have a men's event, a women's event. And it's going to walk you out through the whole campaign for you to be able to design. Oh, I didn't even mention the design editor. It also has a design editor come built on. in on top of it. So you can customize your own designs inside it. You can make your own designs. You can design. You can upload your own content. You can also design within the app and create content as well, and you can post that and take it right to post, or you can download it and use it for other means if you need. So you can do all of that from the app. That's huge. Um, I just wanna ask, is it how similar is it to like Canva or something like that? Are you familiar with Canva I'm at familiar all? Familiar with Canva, yes, yep. Is it familiar? Is it like similar to that? I know yours is way more than what yes. Canva does, but I do know we have some people that use Canva okay. for use Canva, yep. for graphic design. So mm -hmm. would it be 
like a similar type of the thing with design? Yeah. So if you're thinking about like Canva, uh -huh. now Canva's built kind of just for anyone. Yeah. This case is that this is built for, for ministries. ministries. Yeah, exactly. So you're coming into it and then you have content that is ministry based. Very specific. But you can go in, yes, and make edits and make changes Shh. and you have that Love designer that. feature. And we're actually taking some of that to the next level. And so that's coming also to some future update that it's getting even more intense. And there's some other things I'd love to share that we have in the works that doesn't exist that'll be for the church that will be game changing that are gonna come out now that you would have to be available as well. But yes, so awesome. it's way beyond Canva because you actually right. have ready-made content I so love that. So you have that. content coming in that's already ready made, but you can design like content if you wanted to make designs and changes and do those pieces. And then you also have a website builder for your website. You choose a theme that's built by our actual professionals that are working for churches now, for ministries now. And then what you do is, you know, easy, drag and drop, just add your photos, your pictures, update it. We can help you migrate it if need be. And so it's all set super so cool. simple. And so anyone at the church can keep it updated, looks professional, looks great. So cool. All in mobile. So that's on the website. Social media management, because of the way it's set up, you really could have a secretary, an admin, a volunteer that's keeping it up because every week we're updating new content in there. You can make designs. They could update stuff from us. You could go out and schedule and you can put out, you know, schedule those posts. And as you were kind of mentioning Canva, you could take, you know, a Hootsuite or something like that would be 50 to $75 per seat. If you look at a lot of the social schedulers in Silicon Valley, they're 50 to $70 a seat per month. Right. Just to have social just for schedulers, that. just mm -hmm. for that alone. And so that's why if you add all of these up, all these features, if you went out to Silicon Valley, you got some of these pieces, it'd be like $350 a month. Wow. Basically to get what we have on here where you have it now where we're releasing it at a great price for churches ministries it's 99 dollars a month that's it i mean it's a great price all the way around and you know basically what about a little over three dollars a day but what we're doing is since we're, we're rolling it out we're doing something special with fcf that just we're honored we're looking at how do we really just honor the pastors and ministries as we release this as a founder so we're doing an fcf founder special of 50 percent off <laughs> But, but wait, 50% off for life. For life. Forever. <laughs> know, it's amazing. It's a, let's just say the accountant part of the team was like, wait, you're doing you what? Sure we don't want to do this. Are you sure want to do life? They really try to talk us out of it. But we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do it for SCF. Oh, and thank we're just going to honor you guys. So that means that literally for $50 a month sure. and that you're getting it. Now, that's for the annual plan. It's $50 a month, less than $2 a day. Less than $2 a day. So 50% off for life, or you can choose the monthly plan. It's 25% off for yeah. life. So either or, but $52 a day, you get all of that, all in one package. So we're honored. We're only going to do this from now to the end of March, and yep. then Lifetime will be uh, over for this special. The 50% off Locked deal in. will be over. Yep. Locked so in. So great. And of course, if you guys need help rebranding, um, I'll yes. make sure to include all the contact information when I send out your email with yes. the rewatch available for this uh, live event that's happening. I just can't thank you guys enough for your heart for ministry, for thinking outside of the box, for being Holy Spirit inspired. Like it has just been amazing. I'm so uh, grateful that our paths crossed. Oh man, we're so grateful as well. And so honored to be with all you. And I want to remind everyone watching, thank you FCF for having us, being here. Remember, you were born for such a time as this. Amen. Rise up, let's reach people for Christ. Thank Love you it. so much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, 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 what does everybody think about that? Pretty amazing. I want to sign huh? up. What was that, Jesse? That's so good. I want to sign up. Dude, me too. How do we, how do we get the discount? <laughs> okay, so. Do you know the mechanics I, of actually signing up? Yes, I do. I have all of that set up. They already have a website set up specifically for our members. And I just text that to Ryan, right now, she's going to put it in the link or in the chat box. Oh, I text it to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to email it to her. Just a moment. Um, because we signed up and we started using Canva a um, couple months ago. And yeah. it's beneficial. It, it really is a great uh, platform to be able to quickly edit things. And I do a bunch yeah. from my phone and... Um, are you doing the graphics? Couple of, what's that? Are you doing the graphics for the church? 
No, I gave logins to a couple of different people that are uh, okay. using them, but even yeah, internal stuff like what's on our screens here and things like that. Canva has been great just to do quick stuff. Um, we did a chili cook off here yesterday. And so like where the panel of judges were behind them was a graphic and that's all just done on Canva really easy from phones. Yeah. Um, but I'm really interested in the social media scheduler that's built into what he's offering. And then also just the content specifically for churches and ministry that's um, what's so great to about be it. able to design would be really cool. They have a lot of, if you go to their website, promediafire.com, you'll see that they have a lot of high name clients on there already. Um, so, and like he said, they have, there's 40 employees with Pro Media Fire, and a lot of them are designers. Um, and so they design for churches and ministries all the time, and then they end up just putting things specifically for Creativo. So it is already, if you use Canva, there's like blank things on there, and it's whatever. Templates. It's, yeah, they're templates. Um but then you have to come up with what you want to put on it, you know, whatever. There are already specific um, posts made available for you that you can download and use for your ministry, or you can schedule it right there. Um, so that's the first place to start. You don't have to come up with your own content. They have already come up with it for you. And I love that. You can add like taglines at the top of the post and just use the... Um, picture the graphic. It's it's an amazing thing. I'm so excited we've been able to partner with them. And like I said before, they also do rebranding. And if you are at a point where you need to either come up with your own brand or you're needing to rebrand, I would highly suggest them because they ask those tough questions um, that you may not want to ask, but an outside source feels more comfortable asking those hard questions. So, sorry, I have, so I can hear Jesse. I have this and, and I'm just echoing in my ear and I can't handle it sometimes. I need to stop listening to my own voice. Anyway, this app is only $588 for the year. Um, I can tell you that in four months, we pay someone more than that. And she doesn't even do all of the content curation. Ryan does that. So we just pay someone over $500 a month to send the content out to schedule it and do things like that. Um, this is a heck of a deal. And I hope all of you are able to uh, take part in it. So like he said, it's $49 a month, but you need to pay annually. If you would like to pay monthly, they will offer you a 25% discount. So it's still a great discount, but I pray that you guys can hop on this 50% discount. It may be a struggle for some of you, excuse me, not a struggle. It may be a leap of faith for some of you, a step of faith, uh, believing for those funds to come in to cover that. But I believe me when I tell you that when you up your digital game up, you will see the return. You just have to get the right face out there sometimes. And this is it a step in the right direction. So anyway, Ryan put that link in the chat box. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see. Mm. Oh, I'm so glad. It's great. My goal is to have a directory full of reputable companies that churches and ministries need to help with digital media, to help with sound, you know, buying chairs or anything that a church may need. Children's, what is it? Program, content, children's lessons. I wanna make that readily available for all of our FCF members because that's what we're here for. And this is our step in that direction. So anyway, um, you have the first link. I also want to extend a further offer to everyone on here. The next five people that register for Vanguard 
we're going to include some special swag in your registration bag. Five people, the next five people to register for Vanguard. Again, hey, the link is in the chat. Come on, Ryan. She's on it. So you get and a also, link uh, you. go ahead. Clint that we just heard from, which is just a ridiculous wealth of knowledge, so much yeah. depth there, and Come a on. heart for ministry. He's one of the speakers at Vanguard. Hey, oh, guess what? He's speaking. That's going to be so good to hear him. It's going to be amazing for everyone to meet him in person. I have to tell you, you cannot be overwhelmed like I was. Okay, I'm short. I'm not short. I'm average. I'm like 5'3", five, 5'4", five, whatever. My husband is 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, you know, he's significantly taller than I am. And I've hung out with Clint's wife and her kids a lot. And they're all tall. Angela is six foot. So the height difference between us is hilarious. Anyway, Clint walks in and I forgot how tall he was. He's six, six. He made my husband look like a peanut. I couldn't believe it. I stood there and just went because he was huge, massive. Anyway, don't be intimidated when you see him like I was. I was very taken back. You couldn't see the size difference thanks to this Ikea table, but hilarious. So he'll be there in person. He's going to continue talking about the importance of digital, me uh, digital media in ministry and how it can help us utilize the 167 hours throughout the week because that's how many So the hours next five people, the next five people next that five sign up, you're going to give them some free, free swag. Free swag. We've got some pretty cool coffee mugs. We've got some pretty cool t-shirts. We've got stickers. We've got books. What do you want? What do you need? I'm going to put it in your bag. <laughs> I was going to wear my FCF t-shirt, um, but I didn't have a chance to run home and change. I was at another meeting. And so I have to wear this ugly thing. And so I need some more You're sweat. Hideous. How dare you wear Awful. unbranded Horrible. 